The first piece I'm going to play is written by Scottish harp player Maeve Gilchrist. She works at the Berkeley School of Music and she's just right down the street from me since I attend the New England Conservatory. I've studied with Maeve a few times in the past. I studied with her at the Somerset Harp Festival as well as the Silk Road World Music Festival only last year. Maeve wrote this piece in 2015 for her cousin, Catriona, for her wedding. I decided to add a little introduction to the piece with some percussion, with some knocking on the harp, so I hope you enjoy. The next piece I'm going to play is a set from the Patrick McDonald collection. I decided to choose three pieces from the collection. The first piece is called Merry Young and Fair. It is a very famous Scottish Gaelic love song. It is written in the ancient harp style and it is traditionally sung in variations. As a result, I decided to mimic that style. The second tune is called My Love is Fixed on Donald. This piece is a piper's tune that was sung or played in a improvisatory style. I decided to keep it in more of a dance style. And so I used the first two measures of the tune and the rest is my own original material. The final tune of the set is, it doesn't have a name. It's just called number 58. It is most of the time played rather slowly, but I decided to play it in a more active tempo just for fun. So I hope you enjoy.
The next piece I'm going to play is by Robert Burns. He needs no introduction. We sing his Auld Lang Syne on New Year's Eve every year. He also wrote, My love is a, like a red, red rose. This piece is called Jamie Come Try Me. And this tune's theme is love that is steadfast. As a performer, I chose to escalate the dynamic level every time the theme is heard. As a result, this mimics the theme that love never gives up. This arrangement is written by harp player Kim Robertson. I studied with her at the Somerset Harp Festival. This piece is written by Scottish fiddler Bert Murray. He died in 2003. He is from Aberdeenshire, as well as the name of the piece, The Ghost of Gite. Gite Castle also is in Aberdeenshire. It was built in 1479. It was built by the Gordon family and it is known as the ancestral home of Lord Byron. A lot of strange events happened at Guide Castle. There was an old prophecy by a man named Lord Thomas the Rhymer. He prophesied that three men at Guide Castle would die and then the land would, the, the land would lie. And so that's exactly what happened. Three men actually did die of strange circumstances and then the castle was abandoned. Most famously, there's a legend of a piper who got lost in the tunnels underneath the castle and he never came out. And so it's said, if you listen, you may still be able to hear the sound of the piper playing beneath the castle. 
This is also an arrangement by Kim Robertson. <laughs> The last piece I'm going to play is my own composition. I wrote it in December 2021. I wrote it as a tribute to two famous Scotsmen who have affected my life greatly and the lives of many others. Their names are Eric Little and Mary Slusser. They were both known for their strength of character, their determination, and because of both of them, they ran a lot. Eric Little, you may know, especially because this year is the year of the Olympics, he won the 1924 400 meter dash and he set world records. Eric Little was training for the 100 meter dash, but because the race fell on Sunday, he refused to race because it was the Lord's Day. He was called a traitor by many, even by his own fellow Scotsman, but he stayed firm and fixed in his decision. And as a result, he did win and he beat records that held for over a decade. He was originally born in China to missionary parents, and he later returned to China after his Olympic days were over to be a missionary. And he died there. He died in a World War II Japanese concentration camp. He was known by the children in the camp as Uncle Eric, and his last words were, I surrender all all to the glory of God. Mary Slusser was born in 1848. She was born in Dundee, Scotland. She lived in the slums. She was a factory worker. She was also a Sunday school teacher who worked with urban youth. At the age of 28, she heard a story about David Livingston, the famous missionary, and she was so inspired, it was her dream to go to Africa. So she was trained and she set off to Calabar, Nigeria. While there, she found a civilization that was in complete and utter chaos. She did a lot of running there. She ran to stop wars, human sacrifice, and even saved twin babies from abandonment. She was known by the Nigerian people as Ma. She died at the age of 66 of malaria, which she contracted when she first arrived there at the age of 28. There was a state funeral and even Queen Elizabeth came to visit her grave. She was fearless and she said, I am not afraid of anything. Why? Because I am in the royal service of the King of Kings. She was known by the Nigerians as mother of all peoples. Both were heroes. And so I decided to dedicate 
this piece to them. This piece is in five sections. The first section represents finding one's calling. The second one is finding one's passion. The third, a tribute to little. The fourth, to Slusser. And the final theme ends with a challenge. The challenge is this. We are all running a race. Finish well. Thank you.